Good afternoon, Jason Phillips from Auto Appraise. Inspected a 1968 Shelby GT 500 today. It is a zero degree day in Michigan. And uh, I'm grateful to be inspecting a good looking car inside. The car was scheduled for build January 5th, 1968. According to the uh, Marty docs, it came out of the gate 17 days late later uh, January build 1305 cars in candy apple red black knit vinyl 428 top loader wide ratio 350 to 1 Ford 9 inch it's a four speed nice looking uh, reproduction replacement steering wheel Dash appears to be uh, all original. One small cut in the vinyl right up here. It's very, very small. I've got a still photo of it for the prospective buyer. If you need inspection service like this, 800-301-3886. Uh, Jason Phillips from Auto Appraise authenticating a 1968 Shelby GT500. It's not a KR car buck tags on it the trim tag is on it in the correct Shelby plate riveted to the inner fender the lighting's not awesome in here but the wood grain and gauges appear to have been redone six grand red line replacement stereo aftermarket JVC head connector there um, to uh, plug into original date coated seat belts are still in nice shape replacement vinyl on the Seats, replacement carpet, uh, headliners in great shape. Not positive about that. 42,035 showing on the miles. Door panels are in really, really wonderful shape. There's just a few small paint chips here and there. Nothing too alarming. The vent window chrome is real nice, not pitted up. All the seals have been changed. Belts and moldings and sweeps are all in good shape. Jams are done up nicely. Little scuff right here on a replacement sill plate on the opposite side where this door is making a little contact. The doors close nicely. Two finger effort. And the lines are pretty good. That uh, chip here is in pretty good alignment with the uh, quarter panel. Small chip touched up there. The door lines on the other side. The door is a little bit uh, a little bit south of the fender alignment. Digital paint meter loves the car. I got still photos all the way around. I won't bore the onlookers, but 5.5, uh, 7.5, 8.5, 5 5.5. All the way around the car, no real unusual readings. Uh, even up high, there's a little bit of contamination seen right here. I'll roll my camera back and forth and so nothing too horrendous see it other than a few hairline polishing scratches there were just a couple small uh, chips noteworthy the paint reflects nicely two feet away I can read uh, bold print tail panels been restored tail light bezels are in good shape just a little bit of hairline uh, scratching that's showing up under these fluorescent lights. It's likely that won't show up too much in the out of doors. Along the other side, we're looking good. Just a subtle drop in door line there, nothing horrific. Do you agree? A little better alignment there. Small chip, small chip. Just a few little cat paw scratches that may may buff out with some 3,000 but the reflection is nice not a lot of stone splash or issues down low to deal with decals are lined up nicely original car light markings on the glass the windows roll up and down they're a bit stiff by the way and just a few hairline roller marks you really can't even see them in the video I doubt they'll show up there's one right here so a little bit of general glassware, original glass. Same with the rear glass, car light markings. Let me bring that into uh, focus. And the uh, 
line going up through the center, matching up to the feature line in the top. The windshield here is a car light component. Uh, I think it's a replacement date correct unit, but uh, tough to tell. Didn't see any rock chips in the areas that are not covered by stickers. Didn't peel them all down. A little bit of a bow to this hood. Uh, not so much on this side. But a little bit over here. Nothing too unusual. Nothing to really discuss on the trim. Very subtle patina, if any. One small little any ding right there, but all the window wrap, rocker panel trim, wheel uh, lip opening moldings fit super nice. Marker light chrome looks like it was replated or replaced. Same with the uh, bumpers, reverse lights. A little bit of contamination in the paint. Now this is just some imperfections in the fiberglass back here on this deck lid, uh, but there's a few small little uh, contaminations fish eyes or maybe just a little bit of dirt that was in the paint. Nothing too horrible. Looks like it's been there a long time. Aftermarket wheels, Michelin Pilot tires. Exterior wise the car shows nicely. Let's get underneath it. A while back it was reported by the seller that the previous owner rebuilt the suspension. Everything still looks nice and clean. Pretty well detailed. Just a little bit of cosmetic detailing could be uh, helpful. A control arm's done up in a proper fashion with paint. Engine uh, paint is in really good shape. No evidence of major leaks going on. A um, little bit of, little bit of uh, oil stain right there at the lip of the pan, but I don't know if that's really um, anything too fresh. You can see it comes down a little bit from the uh, front uh, main seal and then there's a little drip there on the inspection cover can you see it but uh, nothing too bad nothing gathering uh, engine detail looks really nice engine looks like it's been out of the car no overspray on those mounts exhaust is tied together appropriately cast iron standard uh, manifolds Ford part numbers on those and then resonators into the correct style chrome tips in the back uh, photos of the transmission and engine numbers were taken. I'm going to decode those when I get back to my office. Torque boxes look reasonably straight and sound. Pinch welds look clean along both sides. Got still photos of all of that as well. Up here along the front uh, frame rails, we got a subtle elongation right here on this uh, front rail where it comes into the uh, front cross member, but it doesn't appear that it's been cut out sectioned. Those are all factory spot welds. That appears to be the case. Sides of the rails are really nice shape, so if it got uh, pulled towards the front, we'll look in the back at the rear rails as well. Car's got some nice detail. Correct uh, cooler mounted on the front of the core support there. Radiator seems to be in pretty good shape. Front baffle's in good shape. Lucas fog lights in uh, nice shape. Part numbers on the backs of those. Cosmetically a good looking car. The details nice under the hood. Uh, wheel splash areas are nice. Nothing to report there. Plenty of uh, visible tread on the tires and no major curb scuffs on those American racing wheels. Both sides look just like that. Undercoat has been added, some is peeled down there, you can see, but that's that's solid. Pinch welds all along the side. The rocker look nice. I'm going to move fast here. Nothing uh, stressful or abnormal. A lot of old sound deadener and undercoat on these original pans. Some splicing going on in the fuel lines. This uh, seam where the firewall comes down to the floor pan is a little bit uh, peeled there, but nothing, nothing too unusual. 
torque boxes are in nice shape. I banged on them a little bit. Flanges on these rails look to be in good shape. Where are we? There we are. There's some compression from lifting. You can see that those are not quite uh, flush. Now that's a very, very bad way to do it, but you got the idea. Pretty common on Mustangs. Back here, we've got a little bit of a little bit of a issue going on. These frame rails were tied down in the back, and they were chained and then uh, there was a tear that developed. This one's a little worse on this side than the other side. So it's about uh, two and a half inches long and uh, that could be repaired. They sell the parts for it. Doesn't look like it uh, anybody got after and it doesn't look very new does it? Let's see if I get a better focus on it. So still photos of that to show the prospective buyer. We pulled the casting numbers and uh, information off that uh, Ford 9 inch. Have still photos of that. New shocks, new rear leaf bushings, uh, rear floor seam where it uh, uh, welds into the rear piece. That all looks solid and stable and original. And back in here where the tires would throw mud notoriously. Uh, all good, solid, and stable. No repairs seen there. Correct transverse mount uh, muffler into correct style tips. I don't know about the hangers being correct, but uh, give you a quick look at that other rail from this side, otherwise it's pretty much the same. And there we go. That's it. Back along the tail panel, everything looks nice and clean and supported. Back of the car looks good. Digital meter holds up nice down along here, along the bottoms of the quarter panels. Leaf perch is in good shape. Rails look like they're in really good shape back here. Those die holes are not torn. And up along here, the tail panel support. It's gonna be hard to see with my flashlight in the way, but everything looks straight back there. So difficult to discern on the tie down. Rubber drain plugs present in the splash of the quarters and original um, wire harness uh, grommets. Rear bumper chrome's in nice shape, tips are in nice shape. That's the underbody. Okay, so paint, body, wheels, tires, trim, rear end, suspension. We've got that covered. Original uh, Shelby tag present. Not going to advertise that currently. And uh, buck tag matching appropriately. Cobra Le Mans style 428 valve covers, Holly carburetor, uh, list number uh, photographed and uh, recorded. Intake information again, all recorded. Ford part numbers on the radiator, Ford part numbers on the fan, shroud, <clears throat> yellow top coil has been replaced. The distributor has been replaced. Auto light um, replacement uh, hoses, date coded, color coded, nice looking exhaust manifold showing some burn off. A um, little bit of uh, seepage right down there, but I think that might be aged as well. Hard to tell. Hard to tell. Tall tower clamps. Detail underneath the hood is very nice. FOMOCO power brake booster and the uh, proportionary valve and all the lines are nice and clean. Everything looks really very clean. Oil is clean and full. Auto light, get that back into focus. Distributor, correct Ford part numbers on the fan. All right, we're gonna get her down on the ground and fire it up. Before I throw the air cleaner back on, there are no sand cast marks in the air cleaner uh, lid or base. Tim, 1968. Before we get it fired up and we can't breathe, uh, lights are all functioning, uh, including the side marker lights. C 
sequential tail lights won't probably uh, light up until I get the car running. Reverse lights are functional, that is rare. Uh, courtesy lights are working under the dash. Uh, courtesy lights are not coming on in the back quarter panel trim. Heater controls are functioning as they should. Fan controls, defroster. Gauge lights are operational. No, uh, no neutral safety switch operating. Clock is turning. Well, just about the time I said that, I'm going to need it. All right, ran and got myself some assistance. Going to do a cold start on it instead. Tilt away steering wheel was the guilty culprit. 61 degrees, engine temperature, and the floor is. 61 degrees. Okay, could you crank it over, please? Get out of the way. What? The wind doesn't have to be on the brake, does it? No, it shouldn't be. I don't honestly be. know how the tilt-away steering works. I, I don't know if that has to be in here. I'm not too sure on this. I'll just wait this time till you get it started up. It'll, uh... I think you push this forward. Oh, there we go. okay. Yep. So maybe... There we go. Now it's in the click. Here, let me, uh... Clutch in. I'll circle back to you and you just go... Just go, yeah, this tilt-away steering has to be in the right position. I'll wait till it starts up. Because uh, it must be that. I don't know what else it would be. Uh, it's, yeah, there you go. Is that what it is? Yeah, so it must just be the tilt-away. Yeah. So. Yeah, just double-check it again, will you? I don't want it to be causing the guy grief. I don't either. Yeah, see, like this, we'll have to... Again, I don't know exactly how it works. Well, let me uh, let me okay. fire back up and do a cold start here and uh, jiggle it a couple more times. I'll just wait. The okay. camera's running. Okay, so we uh, are possibly having some trouble with the tilt away steering column not allowing the ignition to uh, engage. Still cold. No? Okay. Not happening? Alright, well we're gonna pause the uh, camera and see if we can work on that for a few minutes. Jason from Auto Appraise. Finishing up pre-purchase inspection, 1968 Shelby GT 500. Candy apple red. Hey, we got to run it again. It's reported as a, from a previous appraisal report that was done by a different company. It was reported to be a numbers matching car. I don't know that to be true yet. I got all the numbers written down. I'm gonna go back and research them. Door corners are real nice. rubber core support seal appears to be an original unit. It's pretty dry and kind of formed. The staples are pretty old and uh, a little bit of tearing going on there. I would suspect an original piece.
unable to see a coolant level in it, which is normal. They're down there away usually. Oil was clean and full. Don't hear any unusual knocking. I have a little bit of an exhaust leak on this side. Subtle.